It feels so good to be a diehard Rangers fan, and I definitely picked them to win the World Series when I made my predictions video a few weeks ago. God, that was... That was rough. But the 2023 Major League Baseball season is officially over. The Rangers are your 2023 World Series champions. We're going to break that game down in just a second. We're also going to talk about some of the biggest storylines heading into the offseason. Where is Shohei Otani going to take his towns to? Also, we have an insane news update about the Padres. Like, it's kind of embarrassing, so stay tuned. You do not want to miss it. Now, just because baseball is over doesn't mean you can't use Code Fuzzy on SeatGeek or Underdog Fantasy. Right now, on Underdog Fantasy, new users, they get special access to this one-yard Derek Henry Pickham, so use my code Fuzzy and you get access to that. All right, the final game of the 2023 MLB season, the Rangers and the Diamondbacks, Nathan Evaldi versus Zach Gallen. This was one for the ages to begin the game. Nathan, he is one of the best in baseball at limiting damage when runners are in scoring position, and Zach Gallen, he is usually one of the best in general at limiting damage, period. Now, they both flex their nasty, nasty stuff. Gallen, he didn't allow a single base hit through six innings. A no-hitter through six in the World Series is crazy, and Nathan, he he was able to escape multiple jams with runners on. He has been big game Nate all postseason long. He has rightly earned that nickname. Texas, they finally got to Gallon in the seventh inning. A little screwball base hit by Corey Seager. He gets on base. That was followed up by an Evan Carter base hit. And then Mitch Garver, he drove in the game's first run on a single to center field. Gallon, unfortunately, his night was over. He came out after one run on just three base hits. All of that damage in the seventh inning. The bullpen for both teams were pretty nasty. It stayed one and nothing going into the ninth when Paul Seawald, he imploded again. He was so good in the first few series of the playoffs and then he just crumbled in the World Series. Two scored on a hit up the middle from Jonah Heim. The second was via an error from Alec Thomas who is usually pretty sure handed out there. And then there's the dagger. Marcus Simeon with a 360 no scope off the top of Rust. Maybe it's a silent shot as well. Who knows? But that was the final kill cam of the 2023 season and Josh Sabors he closed out the ninth inning lowering his postseason ERA to 0.75. They did it without my friend Joey Gallo. They did it without Josh Hamilton, Cliff Lee, Adrian Beltre, Ian Kinsler, kind of blows my mind that all of the juggernaut super teams that the Rangers had back in the day, the 2023 Rangers, without Jacob deGrom, without a healthy Adolis Garcia or Max Scherzer for the final game, they got the job done. They did it. Will Smith, no, not that guy. Not that guy either. There we go. Will Smith has now won three consecutive World Series. And another guy that I want to talk about real quick, Corey Seager. He is now a two-time World Series winner, a two-time World Series MVP winner. I think he is the second positional player all time after Reggie Jackson to have multiple World Series MVPs as a positional player. That was very wordy. I don't know what I just said. But his case for the Hall of Fame is becoming interesting because he might never reach 2,500 base hits. But if we're talking about the best offensive infielders that we've ever Ever seen. Corey Seager, I mean, he's in the conversation now with A-Rod, Nomar Garcia Parra, Troy Tulowitzki, like some of the best offensive talents that we've ever seen. I'm probably forgetting a lot of names that you guys are going to be mad at me for. Cal Ripken Jr. I mean, Corey Seager, he's separating himself and he's becoming one of the more elite offensive shortstops in the history of baseball. So guys like Aaron Judge, Corey Seager, Shohei Otani, do we think that those guys are going to break the voting mold where we're going to prioritize seven or eight year primes as opposed to a 20 year career like Omar Vizquel is not better than Corey Seager, but Omar almost made it because he played for 975 years. So again, for me, guys like Seager, Judge, and Otani, because their primes have been so prolifically good, I feel like the voting could change and actually prioritize primes over longevity. Although longevity should still play a factor, I just think that... Nick Markakis, he's not better than Aaron Judge, even though he's going to have way more base hits. That was a random rant, but let's get back to the two teams, the Rangers and the Diamondbacks. The 2023 Rangers made me look stupid because before the season actually started, I said that timing was going to be their biggest weakness. I thought that 2024, 2025 was when the Rangers were going to pop off. They proved that wrong. So teams like the Rangers, players like Tyler Glasnow, I love when I'm wrong because it makes me a more well-rounded creator. If I'm not wrong, I mean, I'm Jesus himself, and there's only one of those guys. Congratulations to the Rangers, and to be honest with you guys, the Rangers are only going to get better with a healthy Jacob deGrom and Max Scherzer in 2024. They have a few first-round draft picks that are going to be insane. A guy, Wyatt Langford, he could be the next David Wright. I mean, he's that good. He's that scary. The Rangers are only going to get better, and same for the losing team, the Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks and their fan base should be incredibly proud and optimistic towards the future because they didn't even really get a full glimpse at Jordan Lawler, a super prospect. Drew Jones, the son of Andrew Jones. He looks to be really good. They have a lot of pitchers that 
that I like in terms of their stuff. Dre Jameson, I think that he's nasty. I still believe in Ryan Nelson. I think that, I think his name is Slade or Shane Sanconi, something like that. He's got some nasty stuff as well. But if the Diamondbacks can go out and get a three or four starter, whether it's a trade or via free agency, could you imagine if they went out and spent some money on Blake Snell? So you would have Zach Gallon, Blake Snell. Actually, it would probably be Blake Snell, Zach Gallon, and Merrill Kelly. That is a sick one, two, three punch heading into any postseason. Then you would have young guys like Dre Jameson. I haven't even talked about Brandon Fott yet. Like the Diamondbacks could be a super team going into 2024 if they just add a few auxiliary pieces to the back end of that bullpen. Maybe a few other offensive pieces like third base. They kind of struggled and I love Evan Longoria, but he was terrible this World Series. One more round of applause for the Rangers and the Diamondbacks. Although a lot of fans are saying this was one of the more boring World Series ever. And I wish that the games were a little bit closer, but that was kind of the 2023 playoffs in a nutshell. There was like three or four good games off the top of my head. And that was kind of it. They were either blowouts or whoever scored first won the game. And it was not the most exciting playoffs in my opinion. But game number one of the World Series, that was one for the ages. The other ones, it's kind of, eh, it was fun. I love baseball, but I think that we can all admit wasn't the best postseason. I'm sorry. Now let's talk about the San Diego Padres and the mess that they have on their hands. They had to borrow $50 million to cover a few expenses. And you guys can see that right now. And at the very end, as you can see, payroll, player payroll. The Padres had to borrow other people's money. There's a term called OPM. I've seen this on TikTok of like fake entrepreneurs, but you use other people's money to build wealth. Maybe other organizations do this as well, where they take out loans to pay for expenses around the ballpark, but I've never really heard of a team having to take out a loan for player payroll and this kind of goes with the trend that they really want to slash payroll going to 2024. Juan Soto, if he's a member of the Padres in the next season, I would be absolutely shocked. So he's probably going to get traded in my opinion and one more superstar that is going to be on the move, Shohei Otani. The betting odds right now have Shohei Otani going to the Dodgers and to me that makes a lot of sense but other teams that are in the running according to this website, the score.com, now take this with a grain of salt, the Yankees are second, the Giants are third, the Mets are fourth and the Mariners are our fifth. Look at that surprise team down there. What if the Phillies get Shohei Otani? That would absolutely break baseball, but the Dodgers, they've been shedding payroll. The Yankees, if they could have him in that lineup and really balance out the righties and the lefties because Shohei Otani and Yankee Stadium, I don't know what the limit could be, but him and Judge hitting back to back, maybe that benefits Stanton with more protection behind him. That could be a cheat code. Now, speaking of odds and favorites and everything like that, the Braves are already favored to win the 2024 World Series and ESPN. They've already put out their way too early rankings for 2024. Do you guys want to see a breakdown of that video where we go through every single ranking that they have going into 2024 before all of the madness of the offseason? Leave a like if you want to see that because I feel like that could be fun because ESPN, they usually stink at all of these rankings and listings. So before we end the final recap of the 2023 Major League Baseball season, we got to do one more immaculate grid. We just have to. The Giants and the Tigers. I don't know why this guy is coming to mind. A former Ranger, Derek Holland. I think that he was on the God squads that the Rangers had back in the day with Kinsler and Michael Young and Cliff Lee and Vladimir Guerrero, Josh Hamilton, all those different guys. The Marlins and the Tigers. No one's coming to my head. A 300 plus save career played for the Tigers. No one's coming to my head. The Giants and the Rangers. Hunter Pence, one of my favorite goofy players of all time. The Marlins and the Rangers. Nathan. Nathan Avaldi. If you guys don't remember, I think he came up with the Marlins. I don't know if he was traded to the Yankees or he signed with the Yankees. Again, I can't remember. A 300 plus save career for the Rangers. That one is easy. Aroldis Chapman. Honestly, I can't think of anyone else. So if it wasn't Aroldis, I don't know who it would be. The Giants and the Padres. The Giants and the Padres. Was Jerkson Profar on the Giants? I can't remember. Uh, we have the Marlins and the Padres. Marlins, oh, I'm getting stuffed today. A 300 plus save career for the Padres. I could go Trevor Hoffman, but I'm going to help myself out with the rarity score. I'm going to go Craig Kimbrell, 9%. There we go. The Marlins and the Tigers. Why do I feel like Gary Sheffield was on both teams? If I don't get this one, I'm just going to go ahead and quit. Okay, I got that one. 300 saves, played for the Tigers. Who was that one guy? Alv, was it like Alvarado or something like that? He had 50 saves. I can't even spell his name. The Giants and the Padres. Wasn't Sean Manaya on both teams? He was. Okay, then we just have to think a Marlin and a Padre. A Marlin and a Padre. Who back in the day played for both teams? So usually my process is if I can't think of anyone off the top, I'll try and think of some trades between these two teams. And one just came to mind, the Garrett Cooper trade. But I'm going to go with Ryan Weathers, the guy that went back to Miami. 1% look at me and then who is that one guy? It's not Rafael Soriano. It's like Jose. It's not Jose Alvarado, but it's something like that. Who was 
God, he was so annoying to face as a Cleveland fan. He was so good. It's Jose something. And I want to say Jose Alvarado, but that's the guy on the Phillies. It's like Jose something. What's that dude's name? All right, let's think about some other closers that played for the Tigers. I know that Joe Nathan was on the Tigers, but I don't remember if Joe Nathan had 300 saves. Uh, did did Rich Gossage play for the Tigers? I, I mean, th there's that Jose guy. I don't remember his last name, so I guess I'm going to have to go with Joe Nathan and just hope that he had 300 saves. He did. That's not the worst way to close out the 2023 Mac of the Grid season. Oh, another season in the books. But guys, don't you worry. We have content coming all off season long. We're going to be reacting to trades, signings. We're going to be making baseball essay videos for the first time ever on the channel. So we have a lot of cool things coming. Make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the future real soon. Probably tomorrow to react to that stupid ESPN way too early rankings thing. Um, you know, going through the process, um, you, you, have, you set up meetings with teams and whenever... I found out the, the Rangers were one of those teams. I was, I was really excited. And then, um, you know, getting on a call with uh, CY and Boach, um, you know, hearing the vision of, of what the Rangers want to do and, and ultimately getting to meet Ray and, and the vision here and bringing a, a World Series here. Uh, that's the goal, winning a, a World Series. Texas Rangers. Uh, this is going to be kind of a cop-out answer, but I'm going to go with their biggest weakness is timing. Timing is their biggest weakness because they're in the same division as the Angels and the Astros.